Hello, and welcome to Worship. I'm Nick Van Maldehem, technical assistant here at DLUMC, and on behalf of the staff and the entire congregation, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Your presence really means a lot to us, wherever and whenever you are. I'd like to thank Kareen Hera Pfeiffer for providing our prelude and postlude, Cheryl Molberg for serving as liturgist, and Gary Ball Kilborn for delivering the message today. Now I think I've talked enough, so as always, let's start off with a hymn, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Now our call to worship. O God of all ages and all generations, we come to worship you. Women, men, youth and children bow before you, the only wise God. Our four parents led the way for spiritual awareness and growth. We try to follow in their footsteps, recognizing you as God of all. As we worship you, all your attributes of glory, mercy, and love show forth. We humble ourselves in your holy presence because you are awesome. Holy, holy, holy is the name of the Lord. 
Now please join me in our opening prayer. We acknowledge you, O God, as creator and liberator. You are the one who brought the captives out of Egypt and delivered them from the oppression of slavery. You gave laws that shaped how people were to relate to you, to each other, and to the whole environment. You implored people to worship only you, knowing that whatever was put in your place would become the object of idolatry, would become the priority of people's lives. In this time of worship, help us to focus on you, O God, as the priority of our lives. Remind us of your steadfast love revealed so clearly in the new commandment of love that Jesus disclosed with his life. And as we especially remember in this period of Lent with his death, speak to us anew as we offer this prayer and our worship in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for the Hebrew children. It was good for the Hebrew children. It was good for the Hebrew children. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good enough for me it will do when the world's on fire it will do when the world's on fire it will do when the world's on fire it's good enough for me give me that During this season of Lent, we're looking at Bible passages that talk to us about claiming the promise, claiming the promises that God gives to us. And this morning, we're going to be hearing a passage about God giving the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel and to us. Here are these words from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rest at the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. 
You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of each of these, your people, be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, are you ready for a quiz today? I'd like you to go and get out something to write with and a scratch piece of paper to write on. And I'll pause just a moment, or you can pause the the video while you go and get those. Something to write on, something to write with. Are you ready? Okay, first question. Write down the names of as many of the seven dwarfs as you can. Go ahead. How did you do? Did you get all seven? Sleepy, sneezy, grumpy, happy, dopey, bashful, and dock. Okay, second part of the quiz. Write down the names of as many of Santa's reindeer as you can. Go ahead. Santa's reindeer. So how'd you do with Santa's reindeer? Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, and of course Rudolph. Okay, third part of the quiz. Write down as many of the ingredients of a Big Mac that you can remember. Go ahead, a Big Mac, what's in it? Did you get them all? Two all beef patties, special sauce, cheese, pickles, lettuce, onion, on a sesame seed bun. Okay, fourth and the last part of this quiz. Write down as many of the Ten Commandments as you can, and no fair peeking in a Bible. Write down as many of the Ten Commandments as you can. So, did you get all ten? If you need a check, you can look at the Bible passage that we heard just a few moments ago. That was Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 1 and continuing through verse 17. And you'll find all ten of the Ten Commandments there. Now, did you know that while 80% of all Americans know that the Big Mac has two all-beef patties, only just over 50% know that you shall not kill is one of the Ten Commandments. And only 14% of all Americans can list all ten of the Ten Commandments. Among active Christians and Jews in the U.S., only 70% recall that you shall not kill is a commandment. And only 69% recalled, you shall not steal. 
76% knew that lettuce is in the Big Mac. Maybe if God had given us the Ten Commandments in a television commercial jingle, we would remember them better. The old McGuffey reader used to offer a short poem as a memory aid. Above all else, love God alone, bow down to neither wood nor stone. God's name refuse to take in vain, the Sabbath rest with care maintain. Respect your parents all your days, hold sacred human life always. Be loyal to your chosen mate, steal nothing, neither small nor great. Report with truth your neighbor's deed, and rid your mind of selfish greed. From time to time, a controversy will pop up somewhere over whether the Ten Commandments should be displayed in public places, particularly in government buildings or on government property. The controversy shows up in spite of the fact that surveys show that only one out of every ten Americans actually try to practice all ten of the Ten Commandments. Forty percent of Americans subscribe to five or fewer of the commandments. We might honor the Ten Commandments, but that is not the same as keeping them. Keeping the Ten Commandments is not equivalent to be nice and go, don't get into trouble with the law. God created us with a free will. So we have freedom to decide how to live morally and spiritually. What then? December 1989, the nation of Romania was in turmoil. Mass protests had brought down the communist government. And a military court found disposed President Nicolae Sosesco guilty of a spectrum of charges, including genocide. He was immediately executed by a firing squad. Now, no one was in charge throughout Romania. Western reporters flooded into the country searching for, for someone who could speak English and tell them what was happening. Finally, they found someone. In one sentence, she summed up not only Romania's predicament, but also the human condition. She said, we have freedom, but we don't know what to do with it. Yes, God made us with free wills, but God also showed us the appropriate boundaries for that freedom when God gave us the Ten Commandments. We cross those boundaries at the peril of our souls. Erwin McManus is the lead pastor of Mosaic Church in Los Angeles. In his book, The Unstoppable Force, McManus contends that the Ten Commandments should not be considered the highest possible rung for which human beings should strive in their moral behavior. Instead, he says that the Ten Commandments are the lowest possible standard of humane living. The Ten Commandments might be an excellent guide for human justice. It's just that the Ten Commandments are not heaven's standards for living. In his book, McManus notes this. Anything below these standards is choosing to live like an animal, a barbarian. The Ten Commandments don't call us to the extraordinary spiritual life. They call us to stop dehumanizing one another. The law is the minimum of what it means to be human. The reason the law condemns us isn't because of our inability to live up to an extraordinary measure. We couldn't even pass the test with a D. When God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, God was establishing a nation for himself. 
God was giving them the tools to form an ethos that, through honoring him, would result in the nurturing and elevation of the human spirit. In other words, when God gave us the Ten Commandments, he gave us a bowl of nice, soft, mushy oatmeal. It's what we can get down with our baby teeth character and infantile spirit. The Ten Commandments do not represent the best we can be. They are the least we can do and still remain human. Quite simply, the Ten Commandments are wonderful. They are essential, but they are not enough in and of themselves. They are not enough for Christian behavior. When Jesus was asked to cite the greatest commandment, he did not mention any of the Ten Commandments. He cited a law bigger than all the commandments put together. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus calls Christians beyond the Ten Commandments. He calls us to both personal integrity and compassion. He calls us to both justice and love. He calls us both to personal holiness and social holiness. He calls us in the freedom of our wills towards the perfect keeping of God's holy will. The Ten Commandments are wonderful, but Jesus tells us to go further than that. Some of you may recall January of 1982 and the story of Air Florida Flight 90. He had just taken off from DC's National Airport during a blinding snowstorm when it crashed into a bridge and landed in the Potomac River. Five persons survived out of the 74 passengers and five crew members. The crash scene was a nightmare of chaos and panic. Rush hour traffic snarled to a halt. Emergency rescue crews struggled to get to the crash site. First responders were overwhelmed by the destruction. They threw lifelines to survivors. Some even dove into the freezing waters trying to rescue crash victims. One passenger a 46-year-old bank examiner named Arlen D. Williams, Jr., repeatedly handed lifelines to others. Mr. Williams saved some lives that day, but not his own. By the time the rescue helicopter got to him, he had slipped beneath the icy waters. Mr. Williams gave his life to save the lives of complete strangers. Now here's the point. Arland Williams could have kept the Ten Commandments and walked away from that crash helping no one. There is nothing in the Ten Commandments about helping your neighbor. They only talk about not harming others. While the Ten Commandments are essential they are not enough. What is needed is to add to these laws the love of Jesus. That is why Jesus said that he had come not to destroy the law, but to fill it full, to fill it full of love. Remember God's spiritual and moral framework for human living. You must have no other gods. Do not make an idol for yourself. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. 
Honor your father and your mother. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not desire anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the appropriate boundaries on your freedom that will make and keep human life human. These form your spiritual and moral backbone. Flesh your backbone out with love for God and love for your neighbor. Let us prepare now to join together in celebrating Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, together. If you need to, just pause the video for a moment and go get a little bit of bread and a little bit of grape juice. Some of you might have already stopped by the church and gotten one of these packages of wafer and juice. Please be, have some bread and some grape juice available. As we share in the Lord's Supper, we remember a story. It's a story about that night when just before Jesus was betrayed and arrested, he shared a last meal, a Passover meal, with his, his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. And during that meal, Jesus took some bread. He gave thanks to God for the good gift of the grain, and he broke the bread and passed it around to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body broken for you. After the meal, Jesus took a cup and again, he gave thanks to God for the good gift of the grape. And he passed the cup around to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, for this is my blood, which seals the new covenant God makes with God's people. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And we're told that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we're to do so remembering our Lord's death until he does come again. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give thanks to you for all your promises. And even more than the promises themselves, we give thanks that you are steadfast, you are faithful, and we can know that you keep your promises. And so we give you glory and honor and thanksgiving this day. We give thanks that you have sealed your promises, that they will be kept in this act of sharing together in the body and blood of your Son. And that way we share in him and we share in you. We pray now that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread in the cup, that they might be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon all who are gathered in your name, that together we might be the body of Christ. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in service in his holy name. And we pray the prayer as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us eat of the body of Christ. And let us drink of the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have given yourself for us. Help us now to give ourselves for others. Please keep the following people in your prayers this week. Betty, Jan, Judy, Nancy, Howard, Jean, and Jerry, Mitch, Britt, and their unborn baby girl, Gail and Paul, Karen, and Jane. This week we celebrate with the following people. Happy birthday to Nick, Stephanie, Joyce, Rosemary, and Caroline. And tonight, the Lenten book study, led by Pastor Gary, will meet on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday morning, the Bible study group will meet here at the church at 9.15 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Wednesday night, we will have our 6.15 worship service here at church. Please contact Beth in the office to reserve your space if you plan to attend that service. And Thursday morning, Reva's Bible study group will meet here at the church at 10 o'clock in the Fireside Room. And as always, you can continue giving your offerings via mail to 885 Pembina Trail. You can drop them off in the office with Beth, or you can give online through our website at dlumc.org. Thank you. We invite you to consider your offering this day. And indeed, there are many ways to give offerings of money to the church. You can give through the website. You can give through automated giving. You can set a check here. But also consider how you will give yourself to God. Let's join together in praying for a moment as we lift up our hearts in this prayer of dedication. God of holiness and grace, we know the words of your commandments. In our hearts, we know that following them makes life easier, not harder, fuller, not more restricted. We know that there is no God greater than you, no God other than you. And yet we have made the silliest things our gods and have thrown our money and our resources after them. As we offer our gifts this day, we are reminded that only you have given the gift of a Savior and the redemption of our rebellious life. And so in Christ's name, we trust and we pray. Amen.
Let us join together now in our benediction. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Go in peace.